what's so happy about it? We say happy birthday, but the only thing I, I see that's happy about it is that it's one more year in another lifetime closer to getting back home back to Radha Sham Sundar. But other than that, what's unhappy about it is that I'm, I'm here in this material body in the first place. You know, what's unhappy about it is that, you know, you and me alike, probably, I'd be willing to guess. I guess I'd be willing to bet. You know, we turned our back on Krishna. Now we got to go crawling back. Begging to be accepted. You know, some of us are going to want to become cowherd boys. Maybe one or two. <laughs> but most of us, probably, I would venture to say, will wind up in Shimati Radharani's camp. I'll see you when we get there. But getting there means that we have to actually get there. Of course, we can only get there by their grace. But like I was trying to point out the other night, what is Sankirtan? Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that every living entity, and Srila Prabhupada also confirms this, Prabhupada says, every living entity is part and parcel of the pleasure potency of Krishna. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati says that every living entity is a constituent part of Srimati Radharani's <laughs> loving game plan. We are part of the pleasure potency of Krishna meant to cooperate, assist, facilitate in our own little small way, which is also relishable, just like little sprinkles on a cake make the cake more relishable, right? Some, some are silver, some are gold, some are green, some are red, some are blue, some are yellow, different colors, varieties many varieties. So in a similar way, Srimati Radharani is the complete whole counterpart aspect of divinity. She's the Ashraya, you know, Vigraha. Krishna's the Vishaya, Vigraha. So she's the complete whole counterpart aspect of divinity meant for Krishna's pleasure. She is the personification of unlimited love for Krishna. And there are many expanded aspects of that same unlimited love for Krishna in the unlimited capacity as Sarup Shakti manifestations such as Lalita, Vishaka, Rupa Manjari, Ananga Manjari, you know, Chandravali even, diff many different expanded forms, Yashoda Mai, Nanda Baba, you know, Subal, Sridam, you know, Raktak, Patrak, these are all <coughs> Sarup Shakti expansions of the pleasure potency of Krishna, the Ladini Shakti. Of course, they may have, they may appear to have different sources, like in some places it's said that, that Radharani is the source of all the different gopis, 
And Balaram is the source of the devotees in other rasas, including the Vatsalya ras. But really, it's just like you can say that Lakshmi is the counterpart, Sarup Shakti, expansion of Narayan, but actually she's an expansion of Radha. You understand? Rukmini is an expansion of Radha, even though she's said to be Chandravali. Satyabhama is directly expanding from Radha. You know, that Aishwarya Leela aspect of Radha expanded. But they're all expansions of Radha. Even Balaram cannot give pleasure to Krishna without being imbued with the pleasure potency. That's why he's called Rama. Ra, Ma. Ra means Radha. Ma means Madhusudana. Bala. Bala means Sandini Shakti. Sat and Ananda. Nitya Ananda. Sat means Nitya. Ananda. So Balaram is in, in one place, one of our acharyas, the scribes, in, one, in his book, Ananga Manjari Samputika, he describes how Balaram is, is effectually the male uh, form of Radha, masculine form of Radha, meant for giving pleasure to Krishna from a different vantage point. He is the Supreme Personality of Servitor Godhead, like that, and he expands as Anangamanjari. But that Anangamanjari is an expansion of Radha, not just an expansion of Balaram, although it appears that she's expanded from Balaram, just like it appears that Subal is expanded from Balaram, or Madhu Mangala is expanded from Balaram. But actually, even though it looks like they're expanded from Balaram, they're in in reality, they're all expansions of Radha. So they are all swangsa, swarup, swangsa. They're angsas of Krishna's rupa, swarup, and they are of the unlimited category. So they are all like fire, unlimited fire. And among all these different unlimited category, categories of unlimited love for Krishna, Radharani is supreme. So she's the supreme unlimited fire of transcendental you know, uh, conjugal love for Krishna. <clears throat> but the little infinitesimal uh, Vibhanangsa, eternally separated parts and parcels of Krishna, we are not of the unlimited category, we are of the minute limited category, like the sparks. Yet when you see, like if you've ever seen a fireplace, you know, where there's a fire inside, and the fire is looking very nice, different colors, there's some yellows, a little blue, a little, you know, you see some varieties of colors, varieties of flames in the fire, but the fire looks very nice when there's sparks dancing above the fire, in the proximity of the fire. How many times we've heard the analogy of the sparks falling away from the fire and some spark is falling on dry grass, some spark is falling on, you know, the wet grass, some spark is falling in the water and becoming practically extinguished. Karanam guna sangasya, sadasad janma yonisu. So the different, different uh, sparks of the fire, they drift away from the fire and either become, you know, ignited again quickly by, uh, 
let's say, falling uh, into the association of the sattva gun, which is not so contaminating, or falling down further into the raja gun and tamo gun, to the practically the, to the point of their consciousness being totally extinguished, almost totally extinguished. The soul can never really be extinguished. Although Prabhupada says that if Krishna wanted to, he could put an end to the soul. But he's so merciful that he doesn't do that just to give the soul an opportunity to again come back into the proximity of that unlimited love flame of Sri Radha. So that is Sankirtan. Sankirtan means the various little living entities coming into the proximity of the name of Radha, which is non different from Radha. Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So Krishna. Radha and Krishna are dancing and we are dancing in cooperation with Radha and Krishna's rasa dancing affair. They're rasa dancing, you know, on our tongues, practically in the same way that how it's described in Briyat Bhagavatamrita, Krishna invited all the gopis on board to rasa dance on the snake hoods of Kaliya. Somehow or other, Kaliya Nag got the mercy. Even Lakshmi is amazed how it is that, you know, she has to do heavy tapasya and still she cannot get that kind of mercy of having the lotus feet of Krishna on her, on her head. To be so closely associated with Krishna's Rasalila pastimes. How Kalyanag. So similarly, our snake-like forked tongues, you know, somehow, if by their grace, if we get together and call out with all sincerity, begging for the merciful divine appearance of Sri Radha, in our midst, Radha and Krishna, Radha is never alone, as Krishna is never alone. If Krishna is alone, he's not Krishna. And if Radha is alone, she's not Radha. Radha and Krishna appearing together by their special mercy upon us and dancing in our hearts, dancing on our tongue. And, and we're dancing in Sankirtan, at least in our hearts, we're dancing in the proximity of that great love flame of Radha. Where there's Radha Nam, there is Radha. And where Radha is manifest, all of Krishna's Sarup Shaktis are manifest, all of his Antaranga Shaktis are manifest. So by dancing in the proximity of the great unlimited love flame of Radha, Radha's love flame for Krishna in the performance of Sankirtan Jagya, that Sarup Shakti or Antaranga Shakti that's manifest in Shudanam, that uh, rekindles, reawakens the natural uh, brilliance of our spark-like existence so that we again come to our natural constitutional position of serving to beautify the love flame of Radha. By dancing in her proximity. This is training. How to dance for Radharani's pleasure. To make a good show for Krishna. 
a good show of cooperative, you know, loving reciprocation. Krishna just wants that little loving reciprocation from us. He's trying in so many ways to get it out of us, even if it kills us. And to get it out of us, whatever it takes. We have to be like a bug rolled over by a steamroller or a or Woody Woodpeckered out of a tree, or, you know, nuked in uh, Hiroshima, or, or w- whatever it takes to get us to finally break down and surrender to the Sankirtan principle. In Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya has made it easy. Because the living entities are, are all, whoever they may be, all living entities are eligible for Braja Rasa to the extent that they avail of that, you know, transcendental association with uh, with Radha Shakti. So, therefore, Sankirtan Jagya in this age of Kali is so important and it's a very easy thing very easy way the more we cry out for Krishna's mercy the more we come together like I was saying the other night get off the egocentric platform you know and help each other because our individual voices are not loud enough they won't do who are we you know, small timers. But if enough of, us, enough of us get together, that's why the Acharyas say, at least in our line, the Acharyas say that that the performance of Sankirtan is the topmost Anga of devotional service. Of the Nava Anga Bhakti, or the 64 Angas of devotion, or Panchanga Bhakti even, even residing in Vrindavan, or Sri Murti Seva, or Bhagavat Shravan, or Damvas, Sadhu Sangha, even Rasik Vaishnav Sangha. Out of all these five different most powerful processes of devotional service, Nam Sankirtan is the most powerful, the most efficacious, the most all inclusive, and therefore supreme. Nam Sankirtan. Of all types of kirtan, Nam Sankirtan. There's, there's Nam Kirtan, uh, Rupa Kirtan, Guna Kirtan, and Lila Kirtan. But out of all these different types of kirtan, or even just kirtan concerning the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, Sambandha Tattva, Kirtan, you know, Abhideya Tattva Kirtan, Prayojan Tattva Kirtan. But out of all these different types of Kirtan, our Acharyas have said it, I'm not saying it. I'm just, you know, practically realizing to a certain extent the importance of recognizing the value of what the Acharyas are saying. And therefore, again and again, I give stress to our performance of Nam Sankirtan. They say of, he says of all kinds of Kirtan, Nam Sankirtan is supreme. And of all varieties of Nam, Nam Kirtan, Sankirtan of the Holy Name is supreme. And of all varieties of Nam Sankirtan, Maha Hari Nam Sankirtan is the topmost, absolute topmost. Anga of devotional service, where hundreds of devotees come to, or thousands of devotees come together and cooperate together to loudly petition Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, Radha and Krishna, for their special causeless mercy upon fallen conditioned souls like us. 
It takes that much humility. Trinata Pisunichi Na is a very simple thing. Just to be humble enough to get off the egocentric platform, you know, at least long enough for, for a few hours a day, come together realizing that we're all very fallen, we're all very diseased. We need to take the medicine, we need to take sufficient dosage, and we need to take it often enough. You know, once in a blue moon is not going to get us well. We're diseased. We're fallen. And Lord Chaitanya has given only one prime process, the prime benediction for humanity at large. Maybe someone can get Arch and City, you know, and go back home, back to Godhead. But unlikely that will even happen if he's not also performing Nam Sankirtan. Prabhupada told Vishnu Jan Maharaj that he had achieved Archan City. But look how much Harinam Sankirtan Vishnu Jan Maharaj was performing. It's not enough just to do Archan. It's not enough just to do Bhagavat Shravan. It's not enough just to do Bhagavat Kirtan. It's not enough just to do book distribution, even though book distribution is described as Brihad Kirtan. But we also have to come together and perform Nam Sankirtan and really cry out from the heart for Krishna's special, causeless, merciful dispensation upon fallen conditioned souls like us. Nam Sankirtan is his divine dispensation upon fallen conditioned souls like us. The means and the end is the same. It's just a question of our realizing the beauty of what we're being given. But we, we can only realize it, you know, to the extent we apply ourselves to the process which has been ordained, foreordained by the Shastras and propagated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is Nam Sankirtan. And that means getting together and spending as long hours as possible in a day. Unfortunately, Raggedy Olo Aindra Das, you know, ain't able to do it anymore the way he used to. That's my great misfortune. But I know what it's like to experience 14 hour Sankirtan days, 15 hour Sankirtan days, minimum of eight to 10 hours every day for years and years and years and years. I have it behind me so I can stand on my experience. You may not have seen it, but I have that weight of conviction on the basis of my experience of what that does to you. What that did to me, you know, where that, where that took me, you know, and therefore I'm stressing again and again, you try it hours and hours and hours every day and see what happens to you. If you haven't already. If you have, then likely you know what I'm talking about. And you'll probably applaud my statement. Because my statement is perfectly in accord with the Shastras. Perfectly in, in accord with the teachings of our Acharyas. And because I have the experience, Therefore, I have certain adhikar to stand up and say what I know is right. And I don't care what anyone else says. If they don't want to take it, and they don't want to take it seriously, then let them rot in the material world. You know, with their whatever they want to be into. 
big, big management, big, big buildings, big, big, you know, let them have it. That's not going to get us back home, back to Godhead. What are the big, big buildings for? The big, big temples are only there for the public. Why? So that when the public comes, they can get the impression of what the Yuga Dharma is all about by practically experiencing entering into that atmosphere, which is surcharged with mass congregational chanting of the holy names. That's what the temple's for. The deities have come to place their favorable glance upon our performance of Nam Sankirtan. Just like in this temple, Srila Prabhupada said that it was our Nam Sankirtan, our loud chanting with Murdungas and Kartals, which was the actual installation of these deities. The loud chanting of the Holy Name, that's what called the deities to us, and that's what's, co that's what's keeping them with us. That's keeping their appetite wet, so to speak. We feed them very nicely and all these things. That's okay. Should be there. But even if we don't feed them very nicely, this is a point that I'm bringing out in my book also. Even if we don't feed them very nicely, but if we're actually performing Nam Sankirtan, you know, sincerely, earnestly, from the heart, for their pleasure, that even if we don't dress them nicely, even if we don't feed them very nicely, but they'll be happy to stay with us because they see that we're actually doing the real thing that they want us to do. What is the morning program? You know, Vidi, you know, must go to Mangalarti, must go to Guru Puja, boom, 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 down to, you know, <laughs> you know, all right, okay, you know, I surrender, you know, but what is it all about? The deities have come there, they've, they've, they've made their de divine descent, you know, so that the conch shell can blow, so that the doors can open, so that devotees must go to the Mongol Arctic. Do you think that they're going to the Mongol Arctic just to see someone twirl up some sticks of incense and ring some bells? And that's how we're going to go back home, back to Godhead? That's not what Mongol Arctic is all about. The primary purpose of the Mongol Arctic is to get everyone together to chant and dance in Sankirtan Jogya. And the same thing with Tulsi Puja. Tulsi Puja is a little extra special because it says, E Nivedanodar Saki Anugata Koro. Seva Adi Koro Die Koro Nija Dasi. Who's actually praying for that during the Tulsi Puja? Who's actually crying to Tulsi Maharani, begging for her to somehow or other make arrangements for this wretched soul to get the, the, the divine service of, of Srimati Radharani's lotus feet? following in the wake of the Sakis. And if you don't want that, then, you know, e ni vidanadar, you know, saka anugata karo, seva adi karo de karo nijo daso. As you like, no problem. But from the heart. Sankirtan is meant to be from the heart. Praying to Rana and Krishna, to please, 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 please pick us up, you know, from this wretched condition and place us as an atom, you know, in the dust of your lotus feet, somehow or other. So anyway, Sankirtan. Sparks dancing in the proximity of Radharani's unlimited love flame for Krishna. That's what we're supposed to be all about. And that's what's really going to get us there. Krishna's much more impressed with a group effort where he sees that we're surrendering to each other enough 
too. And we're dependent on each other. We, we realize that we're not going to be able to make it on our own. We're not st standing up trying to be our own man or woman. We need all the help we can get. I'm the personification of that. I need all the help I can get. And especially the more broken down I become, I'm going to need more and more help. You know, so I need all of your help. Spirit soul to spirit soul. We're supposed to be Paramahansas or Paramahansinis. We're not supposed to be any of these things. We're supposed to be gopis and gopas. That's what we're supposed to be. So why are we not that? What's wrong with us? Pretty stupid. Happy birthday. <laughs> birth, in, birth in this, you know, rotting corpse of an Eindradas body. Anyway, I'm very grateful to all of you for helping. And I, and I pray that, that Radharani and Krishna and Lord Chaitanya my Sachi Sutta will recognize you for helping me. Whatever little encouragement, whatever little assistance, you know. But real helping means chanting as loud as possible in the kirtans. <laughs> Not just sitting there looking pretty. <laughs> you have to chant loudly. And really cry out to Radharani and Krishna. In the mood of helping each other cry out for Radharani and Krishna. That's para upakara. And that's brajbasi. Without para upakara, there's no brajbasi. Brajbasi means para upakara, para dukkha dukhi. You see that others are unhappy. Just like the Sakis see that Radharani is finally becoming, you know, distressed by her own, you know, pouting. Her jealous anger is making her more distressed and more distressed. Why? Because she's experiencing the distress of Krishna's heart. How much anxiety Krishna is experiencing. So that generates in her, it reflects automatically in her own heart. So the more she's separated from Krishna, but that's, you know, the work of the Viyogini Shakti aspect in Radha. to create that hard-to-get distance between the enjoyer and the enjoyable. But when the Sakis see that the intensity of that Vipralamba Bhav, has, Viraha, has become so much intensified, then some of the suckies, right-wing suckies, there's left-wing suckies and right-wing suckies, you must be knowing, just like there's left-wing and right-wing gopis. Their function is different, but they're still called left-wing and right-wing. The left-wing suckies, they serve to augment the action of the Vyogini Shakti, and the right-wing suckies, they serve to, to augment the action of the Samyogini Shakti. Both of the Shaktis serve Vladini Shakti according to 
necessity of time and circumstance. So when, when it's time for the Viyogini Vama Radha to manifest her, you know, influence, then Lalita Devi steps in. She's a left-wing sucky. She steps in and, uh, you know, vehemently derides Krishna and pushes Radharani away. Pushes Krishna away. She comes in between and says, not so fast, Buster. And then that makes Krishna more anxious, generates more, let's say, ever increasingly fresh curiosity in Krishna about Radharani's absolute transcendental deliciousness. And then, when that becomes intensified to the point where Radharani can't tolerate it anymore, then she starts condemning Lalita Devi. And Lalita Devi tells her that, wait a minute, I'm just doing what you want me to do. Why are you condemning me? In Vidagda Madhava, this is described. And then, of course, who is the maidservant of Lalita Devi? That is Rupa Manjari. She is also Vama Saki. And Ananga Manjari is also Vama Saki. So they assist Lalita Devi and relish, you know, acting in that capacity to augment Radha and Krishna's pleasure pastimes to increase the intensity of their desire for Angasanga. But then, uh, Rati Manjari, she comes and she's very soft, Rati Manjari. She's very soft. She's called Dakshin Mridvi. Mridvi means very soft and gentle, sweet, sweet talking. There's Dakshin Prakara also. You know, if her sweet talking doesn't do it, then another Manjari will come in, or another Saki will come in, right wing Saki, and, and, and tell to Radharani, you know, why are you unnecessarily, you know, chastising Krishna? Can't you see that he's distressed and he hasn't done any fault? You know, go and meet your lover. Don't be unnecessarily proud like that. She will chastise. Whereas the soft Manjari, like Rati Manjari, she'll say something like, you know, Radhe, don't, you know, don't you know Krishna, you know, is actually, you know, she'll speak very softly. But sometimes to, act, to get the job done, the, the prakara saki, there's vama mridvi, vama madhya, means between soft and harsh, and there's vama prakara also. Many manjaris are, are vama mridvi, some are vama madhya, some are vama prakara. And they, they serve to enhance Radha and Krishna's leelas in various ways. So all these bhavas, different bhavas, depending on every, because every individual soul is unique. That's why it's important at a certain point in our devotional evolvement, in the progress of our devotional lives, that's why it's very important to become acqu acquainted with this information as to who is who and what is their position and how they act in relationship to the progress of Rana and Krishna's leelas so that we can 
see which aspect strikes a chord in our own heart. Because after all, it's the Sarup Shakti which has to ignite Prema within our heart. We cannot on our own just ignite our own Prema of love for Krishna. The only way Prema, Prema is like fire. Within wood, fire is dormant. But it takes another fire. Although, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, what is it? Huh? Sadhya. Kabunoi. It is not coming from any other place. Shravanadi. Shravanadi. Shuddha Chitti. Koriye Udoi. Means that beginning with hearing, but what are we hearing? We have to hear Shudanam. That means we have to associate with Shuddha Bhaktas. If someone is chanting Shudanam, then whatever he speaks is pure Shabda Brahman. And within that vibration is coming Krishna's Antaranga Shaktis. So by associating with Krishna's Antaranga Shaktis through the medium of the Acharya Vani and through Sadhu, Rasik Vaishnav Sadhu Sangha is required for igniting Braja Prema within the heart. It's essential. It doesn't just happen automatically. Every living entity has a unique individual, you know, angle of appreciation of Radha and Krishna's Leelas. Every individual has different, different capacity. Something, you know, it's like uh, no two snowflakes are alike. You know that? No two snowflakes are alike. Anyway, therefore, Nam Sankirtan, because, because the holy name of Krishna, when you hear the holy name, and hopefully there's a few pure devotees in our midst, so that that sound vibration is coming from their holy lips. That will help us. So we need all the help we can get. And then gradually, our own individual heartfelt feelings toward Krishna will awaken and, you know, get fired up. So that's why I say get fired up. Dance and chant and feast. Feasting. <laughs> feasting for what? Feast, feasting to energize our kirtan at 6 o'clock in the temple.